Solstice and Equinox. Today, I will tell you all about Solstice and Equinox. So, let's begin. Before going straight to the topic, I would like to tell you two facts. The first one being that the Earth's axis is tilted, which means the Earth's axis is not like this, but it is actually like this. Now, if you want to find how much it is tilted or how much the inclination is, then there are two ways. First way is to use the Earth's orbital plane as base. Then you get the inclination as 66.5 degrees. And the other way is to use Earth's rotational axis as the base. Then you get the inclination as 23.5 degrees. And the second fact is the heat received by a place is more if it is closer to the sun. Like in the figure you can see the Tropic of Cancer is closer to the sun than the equator and the equator is closer than the Tropic of Capricorn. So in terms of heat received by the sun, the Tropic of Cancer would receive more heat, the equator would receive little less and the Tropic of Capricorn would be very least. So hope you are clear with all the facts. Now solstice. So solstice is the greatest distance of the sun from the equator. So as you can see in this figure, solstice occurs two times in a year, that is on June 21 and December 22. Now let's talk in detail about the first solstice. So as you can see in this figure, the sun rays fall vertically on the Tropic of Cancer, which means the Tropic of Cancer will be more hot than equator and the Tropic of Capricorn. And as Tropic of Cancer is in the Northern Hemisphere, we conclude that the Northern Hemisphere will face summer, while the Tropic of Capricorn, which is in the Southern Hemisphere, will face winter. Now, let's talk in detail about the second solstice. So, as you can see in the figure, the sun rays fall vertically on the Tropic of Capricorn, which means Tropic of Capricorn, which would be much hotter than the equator and the Tropic of Cancer. So, it means that the Tropic of Capricorn, which is in the Southern Hemisphere, will face summer, while the Tropic of Cancer in the Northern Hemisphere will face winter. Now, I will tell you about Equinox. So, Equinox is the closest distance of the Sun from the equator. Like in the figure, you can see it occurs on two days in a year, that is, on March 21 and September 23. Now, let's talk about the first equinox, that is also known as the vernal or spring equinox. Now, as you can see in the figure, the sun rays fall vertically on the equator, and it marks the arrival of spring in both the hemispheres, that is the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. That's why it is known as spring equinox. Now, I will tell you about the second equinox, that is also known as the ordinal equinox. So, in this equinox, the sun rays fall vertically on the equator. So, the equator is hot and the temperature is distributed equally and it is the same as the first equinox except the fact that it marks the beginning of the autumn season. That's why it is known as autumnal equinox. So, hope you understood the concept of solstice and equinox. Thanks for watching.